The landscape I'm going to be doing is based on a rural part of New Zealand called Afitu. And in this landscape, just as a point of interest, I'm going to be including an old fence post, an old strainer post, made out of what's called puri wood. Now we'll move on to um, painting the foreground and the post, which of course is going to be the main feature of the painting. It's good when, you, um, when you're doing a landscape like this and you have one element, I think it's, um, it's more effective if you play down the rest of the painting and concentrate on what the main element is, then the eye doesn't get confused. I'm going to start painting this grassy area in the foreground. Now with it, because it is in the foreground, I want a little bit more detail than what I've painted so far in the background. So I do want to try and achieve some sort of a grassy texture. What I think I'm going to use to get that is the use of wax, or basically a candle. So I'm going to do probably two or three stages of waxing and painting over this area and that should um, bring it up to look like it's, it's just grass in a field. I've just got an ordinary candle which you use for lighting the house occasionally when the power goes off. So I've just I've got that. What I'm going to do, I want a very sharp edge. So I'm just with a box cutter knife, I'm just going to cut that off to make sure that this edge here is really, really sharp. And with that, I'll create little bits of grass. It will blunt, of course, so then cut it again and carry on. Now within this grass in the foreground, there are some areas of shadow. If I wax all the grass now, obviously I'm going to wax over a light background, so the shadow won't take through the wax. So what I'm going to do first is put in some of the shadow areas on the grass and dry it, and then wax over the top of that. Before I start waxing, I need to identify where the shadows are going to be on the front bit of grass here. The light's coming from the right hand side over this way, so the fence post is going to be casting a shadow along here. This clod of grass is going to be mainly in shadow here. There'll be a little bit of shadow there, and there'll be shadow out this way. I need to darken those areas of shadow before I start waxing anything. I will be able to wax in the lighter bits, but I won't wax in these areas till I've darkened them. To wax, all I do is hold the piece of candle like this, and with a firm pressure, I press against the paper. Now I'm only going in the light areas at the moment, so where the wax is taking is going to be like a resist against the colour and the water, but because the wax is transparent you should be able to see what's underneath as well. Now I'm going to go up here slightly into these little bits of masked as well and then down the bottom of the shadow here it's important that I have a few little bits of grass sticking up there so I'm going to wax there as well just in front of where the shadow is going to be. The pressure on the wax you're going to have to experiment with yourself because it's a it's a firm pressure um, but you're going to have to do it yourself and see what works for you and what doesn't, how hard to push. If it's too soft it won't take properly and if it's too hard you end up with kind of a cakey bit of wax. 
so it's just something you have to feel out for yourself really so you should be able to see where some of the wax has taken there normally if you can't see where it's taken and where it hasn't taken you can hold the the whole painting board up to the light and look at it at a very low angle and you'll see the wax um, shining a bit on the paper and that's the best way to tell or how to know where you've been with the wax on top of the grass now i'm going to wet the area and just drop the color i've mixed into the wet wet grass first and it'll spread a bit as usual and the wax should resist the color where i where it's taken on the paper what i'm going to concentrate on first though is probably just getting those little shadow areas in that i want to out of the cobalt blue and the cadmium yellow light i've mixed about four different tonal values of green this one here is a lot of blue and a lot of umber and a tiny bit of yellow this one's got a little bit more yellow in it this one's got even more yellow and that's got a lot of yellow in it so these values i'm going to use for the greens of the grass because um, the complementary of green is red I've, again i've mixed up a little bit of burnt sienna which i'm going to drop in here and there it'll just zing up the grass a little bit to have that that red content i might put a tiny bit of crimson in there as well just to up the red content i'm going to put some um, shadow color just in these areas here remember the fence post is casting a big shadow over this area as well so i'll put the the like the medium shadow tone across now just where it's casting a shadow now you can start to see where the wax is starting to resist some of the paint there can you see that this clump here I'm going to just lead the shadow up to the top of it down here there's a little bit of a shadow I'll carry on down here with a little bit more shadow as well just in here there you can see it's taking nicely there the wax and a little bit further along as well probably here and there now getting back to the area just behind the post I'll put in a slightly lighter tone just here and there and it'll just create a little bit more depth into the sunlit areas same with up here you can go into the bits I originally masked a little bit going slightly yellower again with the grass or yellow green I should say up into here again here as well some of these extra light bits we'll just give a little bit of colour maybe so that's not all too light ok 
Okay, and I think that should do for a first coat. Maybe a tiny bit more shadow there. That's good so far. Now to, to dry this application, because it's got wax on it, if you um, dry it with a blow dryer, you don't want to put the blow dryer on hot. It's got to be just very, just warm, just lightly sort of warm. If it's too hot, the wax will melt and disappear into the paper. Now I'm going to put on another application of wax and another wash over the top of that. But before I do, again I'm going to cut a little bit off the end of the candle here to ensure that I've got a sharp edge like that. For this next application of wax, I'm going to go into the dark area that I've just put shadow over. So that will pick up some textures as well and won't just be a blank area. So again, I press firmly doing grassy type shapes in all sorts of directions, not just up and down. And make sure we build up quite a bit of texture there. Using the, this masking fluid, I'm just going to put a few little bits, or mask out just a few little bits of of light grass in amongst here as well. Just a few bits that are catching the light here and there. Masking them out will be a stronger sort of a texture than um, just waxing. So I'm not going to do too many. It'll just be the odd one. You know how some grass, there's always one or two bits that stick up a little bit higher than the rest. Just catch the light. Now that I've done a sec second application of wax and a little bit of masking, I'm going to do another slightly darker wash over this foreground area again. So I'm going to wet it again because it'll be wet and wet. And when I'm doing this wash or this foreground area, what I'm keeping in mind now is the aerial perspective in the painting. Now the aerial perspective is basically how our perception of distance, um, how our perception changes with distance of tones and colours. Um, usually the general rule is in the foreground things are normally warmer and darker and as they go to the background they become cooler and lighter so that's what distance does to our, our perception of them so in this foreground here I'm going to go a lot darker this should be the darkest piece of the whole painting that I've done so far and that will hopefully bring it right up in front of our eyes so that we're in no doubt that this is the closest part of the scene okay so you can see I've gone very dark there you can see the wax resist has taken in the shadows See how it's broken up the little dark bits and created quite a texture there, which is good, that's what we want. Same here, I'll put a lot more dark here. Now also with the aerial perspective, um, things get a little bit warmer in the foreground, so I am going to put just the odd little bits of burnt sienna and they should really react with the green to create a more interesting um, colour balance. Now 
Now some bits of grass will actually be going up the fence post a little bit so I'm carrying some of the green up there as well. And then just carrying along the foreground here really. Intensifying the dark. Now I'm going to paint in this post here. So the left hand side of the post is going to be in shadow, the right hand side is going to be in light. But before I paint it in, most of this dark here, I, I, want, I want the grass to show in front of it. So again, I'm going to, over this green I've put, I'm going to just wax some little bits of grass that will go in front of the shadow there. And I might even just mask a couple as well, just to make sure we have that texture in front of the post's shadow. Just a few little bits going across. That should be fine. Right, now I'm going to um, paint this post next. So, as you can see, um, I'm going to paint mainly the local colour of the post first, um, with a little bit of the beginnings of atmospheric colour. But basically I'm going to mix up burnt sienna, as you can see here, and umbers for the cracks in the post and then where it goes into shadow it goes into quite dark umber and cobalt here. So I'll put those on, um, I'll put some of those colours on first as a bit of an underwash and then for the cracks I'm actually going to wax over the top and then put another application on as well. So the palettes I'll be using for the fence post is I've got a slightly yellowy fawny colour there and then of course the burnt sienna then probably some pure, this is fairly pure burnt umber and then I'll also incorporate for the very darkest dark bits um, the burnt umber with a bit of blue in to give an almost black colour which will be there. So that's mainly the colours I'm going to use for the first washes of doing the post. So again the first thing I'm going to do is wet the post and put on some of our preliminary colours going to go down to about there. Remember I've waxed and done a little bit of masking down there so that should take its toll on what I do behind it on the post. Make sure the whole surface is wet. Try and be careful at the top here because that's where it goes into a lighter sky so I don't want to go over that at all if I can help it. Yeah. Make sure it's fairly saturated so we get a long working time. Right, I'll put on a little bit of the fawny colour first. Now, because this is sunlit on this side, I don't want to cover all the white completely because there are little bits that are almost white, so I want to leave those as well. But now, when I get into what is going to be the shadow area, there are some quite dark bits here as well, so I'll put those in first.
and just kind of bring them gently over towards the sunlit area. It's still quite wet as you can see. But I'll put in pretty much where some of these cracks are in the shadow first, I think. Bit of burnt, um, uh, burnt sienna. Go slightly darker again. little bits of irregular darks as well in this wood. Remember it's the Puri tree which is quite gnarly and old looking. Okay now that'll probably do just as a first um, wash I think. If we look at the post now, you'll see that where it's catching the light are some quite rough little patches of wood. Now, these rough little patches, if we move to the post that I'm painting, are going to be up here. Now, this is perfect for waxing. If I, re if I put a lot of wax on here, over this undercoat combined with the texture that's in the watercolour painting it should give a really rough woody effect that's catching the light. So now I'm going to put the wax on in this area of the post where it's catching the light and I'll press reasonably hard so it really catches the texture of the paper. Okay. And where the wax doesn't take is where the cracks in the wood are going to be basically. Now because waxing like this isn't an exact science, I can't predict absolutely where it's going to take and where it's not going to take. You just have to give it your best effort sort of thing and hope that it's pretty much in the right place. Go for the little light bits you can see already because they're the bits that are going to look like they're catching the light. And up here as well, curves round a little bit at the top there. And I might even put a little bit here as well. Okay, that should hopefully be enough. If I hold the painting at the shallow angle to the light, you may be able to see where the wax has taken to the surface of the paper. Right, for this application again I'm going to wet it. So we want some soft edges as well as the waxed edges and a few hard edges maybe later. So I'll just make sure it's reasonably wet again without disturbing the paint underneath, hopefully. Right, I'll start with some really dark colours again. Put them in even a bit more strongly this time, I think. Okay, now that's got a little bit of blue in it because we're in, in the shadow as well. Top here, the top goes quite dark there. Okay, 
Now I've got a smaller brush and while it's wet I'll start putting in a few more of these burnt sienery bits add a little bit more texture to it Hopefully the wax will be resisting some of the burnt sienna as well. Bring that right down into where the grass is a little bit more. Now go to the dark again. Now I'm going to time it so it dries a little bit more before we put it some darker some really dark cracks in as well okay at the back here I'm just going to firm this up a little bit here we will have a little bit of reflected light in this post as well so I am leaving a few of these areas a little bit lighter so that we can see the reflected light. It's still a tiny bit wet to do the, the very dark crack so I'll just wait a little bit longer. Okay now it's almost on the point of drying now so it should be right to put some of the really dark cracks in and they'll go in pretty much as if it's wet on dry so when I'm doing things like this it's very easy to be um, symmetrical but with with this sort of texture I don't think it's a good idea to be too symmetrical with it. We want to have an interesting texture, texture that's um, slightly irregular. When things are symmetrical, they are balanced, but also they're a little bit boring, probably. Whereas if it's irregular, it's not totally balanced within itself but within the context of the painting it is but it's more interesting so some very dark bits there okay and now I'll just get the burnt sienna and just strengthen up some of those as well some of the textures here that are in the sunlight okay so you see I've left little bits of light there which will look as though they're catching the sunlight in the final result of the painting okay Okay, just in the shadow, what's going to be the shadow area here, I'm just putting a few little bits of wet and dry just to sharpen up the texture a little bit in here as well. This is before I put the shadow wash on, which I'm going to do next. Yeah, that should do it. Now for the atmospheric colour, or the shadow colour, which I'm going to put over the left hand side of the post, I've mixed up the cobalt blue and umber again into this sort of consistency. It's, um, it has got quite a lot of pigment in it. It's not so thick, it's almost opaque, but it is quite a, an intense sort of a, a wash. Into that as well, there is, there's such a thing as core shadow, which I'll talk about. I've put a little bit more umber and a little bit more cobalt blue, so it's slightly darker. 
and that will be the darkest parts of the shadow and then within the shadow as well there's going to be a bit of reflected light so I've made um, I've made this out of some cadmium yellow light a little bit of burnt sienna and then I've just dipped the brush into this um, into the main shadow mixture here and just dipped it in there it just kind of dirties it up a little bit so it's not a pure yellowy colour and that will be the reflected light there so when, once I put these on these colours the post should really come to life um, and start looking more like a 3D sort of an object. I'm going to start with um, the core shadow first. The core shadow is where the light meets the shadow. So it's right at that intersection here. Now putting this shadow on, this helps tremendously with the roundness of the post to have it just a little bit darker where the shadow meets the light you'll make the post look rounder and the core shadow is a fairly dark part of the shadow then I'll change to the main atmospheric colour which is a little bit lighter and a little bit bluier and I'm going to put that mainly at the top of the post and then bring it down joining with the the cool shadow a little bit but halfway down I'm going to change and I'm going to go to the reflected light color which is that yellow color so what happens is with shadow is because light travels in straight lines it bounces off the grass here and comes back into the shadow and slightly warms the shadow so you can see I'm building that in now and you'll get a warm, more glowing sort of effect. So I bring this down to the bottom. Now the bottom is quite a dark bit of the shadow. The bottom of the shadow is normally called the occlusion. And that's where the two surfaces meet, the bottom of the post and the grass. So I'm going to make that very dark right there and then I'm going to carry the post of course is casting a shadow so I'm going to carry that right across here it's casting it across the grass so I'm building that into this clump of grass here as well you can see the wax texture is really starting to take hold now in terms of the colour and tones Bring this right across and that's casting right out of the painting pretty much and you can see where we've waxed the, it looks like the grass in front is poking up in front of the shadow okay now I'll just get back to the post and I'll just make sure the shadow's going into these cracks in the foreground a little bit more perhaps yep that's all taken quite nicely and then it's just a matter of carrying along the grass and just creating a little bit deeper shadow here and there and the shadow really is what creates the effect of light in a painting as long as you can leave the light out successfully and put in the shadow or this atmospheric color you should get a strong feeling of sunlight within the painting Again, I'm just using bits of the, the tip of the brush to create a little bit more of a grassy effect here and there. Just wet on dry. And because we've gone so dark with the core shadow and the occlusion, 
this should bring the foreground right up so it feels like we're almost there hopefully just give an extra bit of texture with the tip of the brush like that and I think that should probably do that so it's just a matter of drying it now really now I'm going to rub this masking fluid off you can try with your finger but sometimes it gets a little bit um, rough for your fingers it burns them in which case just use a, um, a towel like a, a kitchen a dish towel or something and that'll get it off as effectively So here we can see the masking, it, it's quite light there. So, and in places like here, I'm just going to get a brush and we'll just colour those slightly so they're a little bit darker. So we don't want them all too light. So I've just got some lightish green. I'm just going to cover that a little bit. Same with up here, just put a few little bits of green on. Okay, so I'll show you now just how to get rid of, rid of the wax residue. Is just get a kitchen towel, an ordinary kitchen paper towel, put it across the, the painting where the wax is get an iron, put it on um, only warm, something like silk probably, and if you just iron the top of the paper towel, the wax residue should melt and just melt into the paper towel. Okay, I'll, I'll just do it on the top of the So I'll just put it over the top of the post as well and just lightly iron over that and the wax should melt into the paper. And there you are, there you see the, the melted wax has gone into it. I've pretty much done what I, what I wanted to with this painting now. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you found parts of it informative. So please watch out for the next video I put out on my channel on YouTube. Thank you.